It's a real simple question. It's got somewhat of a more complicated answer. But for a simple definition, now we're going to talk about what is a chemical reaction. Uh, by definition, a chemical reaction occurs anytime, and we're talking anytime, a chemical bonds are broken. So if you have, let's say, water, and water is normally drawn like this, and these right here are represented, they're a kind of chemical bond. Now, if this is broken, snapola, and the H's are free, and the oxygen is now off by itself, you've now broken chemical bonds. And the atoms that were reactants will rearrange themselves to form new atoms, brand new atom. I should say, well, it's not new atoms, it's brand new compounds or molecules uh, that didn't exist before. And they all have now, they have uh, different chemical properties. So, you know, they do things that the reactants didn't do because now the products, they're all bright and shiny and brand new and they do cool new stuff and they're different. It's a completely different set of materials now, and that's what makes it a chemical reaction. Now, in this particular case, we're looking at reactants, and a chemical reaction is broken down into two pieces. You have reactants, which are here, and this arrow, which is usually read as reacts to make. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in, in chemistry world, that is an arrow. That's, it just means arrow. So um, in this case, the arrow divides the reactants and the products. These are reactants. The calcium silica oxide, which is right here, calcium silica oxide, and seven of these waters right here. So you got waters. So you got these two things mixing together. They are the reactants. And um, that's what's going to have to break apart. Now, in this case, uh, after we've looked at the reactants, and as we recall, those are the reactants divided by this little guy here. Everything else, every other molecule and compound on the right-hand side of the arrow is referred to as a product. It's, it's what you produce. So I produced stuff. So there it is. That's what you're producing. And in this case, you're dealing with calcium oxide. And so anytime oxygen is connected to something, it's called an oxide. So we got calcium oxide and silicon. Now this is kind of a cool stuff. This is silicon dioxide. Uh, the prefix di means two. So this is dioxide because there's two of them. Hydrate. And that's because these, these waters will actually covalently, not covalently, but hydrogen bond themselves, like statically bond themselves to the silica dioxide. Now, silicon will do this with the oxygen. So it'll kind of bust this thing out. And then the waters will just kind of come and hang out here. But they hang out with some force. And so they're very difficult to pull apart. And one of the extra products here that we're dealing with is calcium hydroxide. So there's our calcium again. And... Um, Independently, that O and that H is called an oxygen and a hydrogen, but together they form hydroxide. So if you see them together, they are hydroxide. It's kind of a special little grouping, whole group of elements there. And so those would be the products. So we have reactants over here and the stuff you make, which are called products. Now, the way that these things happen in terms of a chemical reaction, anytime you have a chemical reaction, you have bonds that break uh, between the chemicals that you're starting with. So the stuff that's breaking is going on here. And when these all break apart into their individual pieces, they rearrange themselves into new substances making new bonds. And so the energy is absorbed during the process of breaking the bonds and then released again when the bonds are then reformed. Now, one of the things about chemical reactions you have to keep in mind is that uh, there has to be, absolutely has to be, the same number of elements on one side as there is the other. So if we were going to have, let's say, this side here, which is our reactant side, and this side here, which is the product side, do we have the same exact number of elements? Well, okay, we can count them, but how do we do that? Okay, well, real quick, this three means that you have three calciums. Okay, so you got CaCaCl, 
Ca, three calciums. This five right there means I have five oxygens. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Now the silicon, you notice how it doesn't have a number there, so there's just one silicon there. Now that two out in front means that if I take all of this, that means I've got two of those. That's what the little numbers mean out in front. They essentially mean that you have two of whatever that is. So that means that now I've got, uh, if I look at water, I've got H and H, and I've got one oxygen right there. But that seven means that I have seven of all that stuff. Take a second, pause the video, and see if you can count up how many of each element you have. How many calciums, silicon, oxygens. Remember, we got to combine the oxygens from both sides here, and hydrogen. Now, what you should have here is 2 times 3, which is 6. So you should have a total of 6 calciums. And for silicon, you should have 2 silicon. And for the oxygen here, you can kind of cheat here because you can go that 2 times 5, and that gives you 10 oxygens plus the seven that are over here. So on this side, we have 17 of those oxygens. So we kind of counted those all up. We had seven from here, 10 from over here, and that gave us 17. And hydrogens, well, we have, well, seven times two. So for hydrogen, we have uh, 14. And that's how you can figure that out. Now, the same process happens over here. And we'd have to count up using the same process we used on the reactant side to see if there's the same number on the product side. You want to check that out? All right. Pause the video and see if you can check and count all of the, uh, the elements here. And you should have exactly the same. Now, if you do have exactly the same, then this is what the chemical reaction is referred to as balanced. It means you have the same amount of mass on this side as you do on that side. Now, it looks like you have more over here because there's more things. But look, keep in mind, I mean, that's a kind of a big compound right there. And we have seven of those. So if you add up the mass of all of the elements here, they should be exactly evil. So if, like, if you imagine like a teeter-totter, of course, you guys are probably too young to remember teeter totters, and you have uh, you know, you have ten pounds on this side and ten pounds on that side. It's going to stay balanced, and that's kind of what we want to see here—the same amount of mass on both sides. Now, if you have any other questions, be sure to talk to the director. Uh, that's me. So I'm going to sign off here real quick.